The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of VRS. I'm your host, George Pardos. So, in uh, in breaking news this week, a couple things have happened. Um, the first thing, which is the most troubling, or something that we um, hasn't made the, the news today as, as much as it should, is the fact that uh, we have had um, it. Russia has escalated the war, and Russia has now um, has conscripted or drafted or however you want to say five um, three hundred thousand men. And there's a scene in the in the airport where now um, the the Russian government and, and people are fleeing Russia. Uh, howdy, Michelle. Always a pleasure. Uh, and uh, the Russian government um, has um, – Dean, thank you. Thank you so much. For those who don't know, I, I want to take a quick break, and we'll go back to that. In two weeks' period of time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this to you as just a, a friendly – thing to people that can listen to. If you have family out there, reach out to them. Um, in a period of two weeks, I lost my aunt and uncle. We had funerals two weeks apart. And as you get older, you're going to realize that you have, you're going to attend more funerals than weddings. You're going to, a lot of those times, the funerals you're going to go to are going to be more, um, you're going to, the only times that you, sometimes your family is going to get together is at funerals. So take some time and talk to your family because you just never know when it might be the last time to do so. And this year has been a very tough year for our family. We lost my uncle's wife in May. Michael Botto died in, in July. Um, and we had my aunt and uncle died. And, and, and so 2022 hasn't really been a good year. And I, I say this, your family is bound together the way you make it bound together. And I say that because a lot of times we fight with our family, but there are representation on this earth, um, especially when you when you think about that your family is you, your genetic line. It, it's who represent you. It's your, you know your your daughter. And and I I hate to see family arguments because let me tell you, Greeks, huh, our family arguments are spectacular. But at the same time. Don't let family arguments overtake, you know, your family. And that is the, the you know, that's one thing I can say about that. And I, I think one of the, the problems that I, I, I'm seeing today, and especially with, with what is going on in the world, is that, uh, um, that we are, we're changing the meanings of what used to be accepted you know, I don't know. It, it, it's I'm, I'm frustrated about this, but we're changing the meaning of what used to be accepted terms, and that is what is uh, you know polarizing a lot of debate. Um, the they them the you know the you know, and I don't care about the you know what LGBT letter you are. I don't care. Um, but you know, people are making that out. I mean, and and people are arguing about this with the Little Mermaid about the. But you know, she should be black. Disney showed Zeus as a loving, kind-hearted father. And anybody that has ever read Greek mythology knows that's the farthest thing from the truth. But hey, it's movies. But what we've done is we've created terms. And so we've created terms that just don't mean anything anymore. So I was on, I, I go on TikTok. I go on um on Instagram every once in a while. And now they're using the word SEGS, S-E-G-G-S, for sex because there's some sort of algorithm that is tripped if you say sex. And I'm like, I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, I, I cannot, for the love of Zeus and all things holy, understand what why they're doing that. And here's the, the point. They are now, cha we're changing words 
to mean stuff that they weren't designed to mean for. And we're changing the meanings of original context to mean stuff that it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that anymore either. And why are we doing this? I, I, I think more and more of it is to polarize people and to, to say, well, this is what we are, you know, this is what we're doing now. And this is, you know, this is what we're going to use to polarize people. And I made a post the other day about that Soros and Rupert Murdoch and all them had, um, had uh, business interest in a couple of broadcast networks. And the thing is, it doesn't matter whether you're left or right. Here, here's the issue is that the, the powers to be want you us to be polarized because that creates friction and friction creates con, uh, conflict and conflict creates content. Um, yeah. And, and here, here's one of the things that I got into an argument with one of my friends the other day, and I, I just could not believe that I was having this debate and I need to go just take a little bit of a, a, of a history lesson. And I know some of you will disagree with me and some of you might not, but I have a master's in public policy. I went to Antioch University, which is a very liberal, very liberal. For those who don't know, Antioch is in Yellow Springs, Ohio. It's where Dave Chappelle um, lives. It's a very liberal town. But here's the thing. They had this great program until they went bankrupt where you, you would go once a week to work on your master's. And it was usually on the weekend. And it was a great program for non-traditional students. And it, and it was, and it was a great thing. And, and, we went there and had a, a great time. Not a great time, but it was very interesting because the people that were there um, were made mostly, mostly non-traditional students. And as a result of it, we had some very good debates. And one of the things that they made us do, which is really interesting, is they made you debate from both sides. So we had a debate both sides of gun control. We had a de de debate both sides of increasing taxes decreasing taxes. And we had to do it from both sides. And so the, the class would be split in two. One week, you'd be pro. The other week, you know, one, one session, you would be pro. The other week, you'd be anti. And you had to do it in the same session. And, you know, we did that. And what it learned, what we learned was that there's, it, it taught you how not to have cognitive bias. You go today, and it, last week I got into an argument with a friend of mine, smart guy. One of the things that has been hijacked, and especially in the last 10 years or 15 years of social media, and this is what it, it absolutely drives me insane, is one of those things that has been in, incessantly, um, uh, the has been, is that they made fascism a left-leaning ideology. Absolutely nonsense. They made the South, the couple things that are, are just basic tenets of history. The Civil War was fought about slavery. Now, the, the fascists are right-wing, always have been. Irish were never slaves in North America. Now, they were the only time that slaves that the Irish were slaves were in a, in a place in a little town in a little island called Montserrat. That was it. That was the only place that they were ever slaves, and they were indentured servants. The differences between an indentured servant and a slave is the kids of an indentured servant are free. The slavery is not. That that is one of the big you know uh, disconnects, and it was like crazy that they they you know. So what they did is they diminished the power of what it meant to be something. And so one of the other things that, that has happened is the Holocaust deniers. The Holocaust deniers had, had started, and I never saw this prior to the, um, I never saw this prior to this, uh, you know, to, to social media. And, um, they just were not, uh, it, it just never happened. They, they never, no one ever argued about this. It was just no, then social media came out and then we just started changing words. Now, why did we do that? I think a lot of that is to lessen 
the ideas of what was acceptable. And I think one of the other reasons is it's to confuse people. And, and I'll tell you where it's done a very good job in the financial markets. We've taken terms that were for years acceptable financial terms and have changed them around. And, and look at, at, at what one of the results has been in runaway inflation right now. We have runaway inflation. We have runaway in inflation. We have um, diluted um, money supply. We have oil um, that is, you know, that we're not able to, to get. And, you know, we have all of these myths that have been thrown on the American people. And mostly because it is... Um, one of the reasons behind it that they're able to get away with this is because they've taken the terms that normally were, would have been acceptable terms and they've diluted what it means. You know, no one in the last um, in no one in the last thirty years prior to social media. Um, you know what? You're right. Um, you you wouldn't, and Dean, that's a very thing. But here's I. I I take social media and I'm going to give you a, a prime example of this. It's like the Beanie Babies. <coughs> the Beanie Babies, I used to collect them. I still have a couple of them. I got rid of most of them. But the Beanie Babies were a manufactured market. And the people that made the Beanie Babies limited how many Beanie Babies you could get. Um, they, they made a limit on when they were releasing them. And, it, and it, they created an artificial market for it. As a result, now most Beanie Babies are worth nothing. Um, there's a couple of them, like the Lady Die one is worth uh, the um, the uh, um, the Lady Die is worth uh, some money, um, and there's a couple other ones. But for the most part, most, most of the Beanie Babies have have died off. I mean, they're just not. Uh, they they just don't have a a lot of value left in, and even you know there ones that I I remember um, that were selling for, um, um you know I don't know for five hundred bucks or now they're down to you know twenty twenty dollars. Now there are some that are still worth money, but for the most part they've they've gone by the the wayside. The point that I'm saying about them is that. As a result, um, and the um, as a result of them, that there are some ones that have, um, you know, now the the you know people are selling the the Princess Diana one for like six hundred thousand. I, I mean, it, it's it's crazy, um, and I think I have one, but it's not worth that much. It's but here, here's the point behind it. Um, it's that a lot of these ones that were, you know, that were sold um, now are just wor worth nothing. And the reason behind it has been is that we diluted the marketplace. See where I'm going? We diluted the marketplace. Things are worth less. We diluted what words mean. Things are worth less. And the, the problem is now that we have created um, a, you know, because we've created a, um, a you know, we've created a, um, a you know, we've created a, um, the, the dilution of words. Now things don't mean anything. What is a woman? The fact that that movie has to be made that it's that what is a woman has to be made this year just shows you how crazy um, a diet, you know, the diet tribe has, has become. I, I mean, I would have never imagined that, uh, um, hey, you know what, Dean? I don't think so. Because let me tell you, your your trains are still worth money, right? Your, your, you know, the, even the knockoff trains were, you know, didn't dilute the marketplace. No one says a dilute, you know, a knockoff Rolex made Rolex is worth less. Stop it. Anyway, going back to this. Um, 
I think the, the, the problem has become is that we have diluted the, uh, um, you know, we've diluted everything um, that is, you know, that is worth money. And it's the same thing with, with, with dialect. And it was the same thing with words. So one of the things that always pisses me off, and I'm going back to the left and the right. And, and this is where we've hijacked the narrative and changed what words mean. The fascism is a, is a model of governance. Socialism is a model of governance. Communism is a, so, a model of government. Um, democracy, a representative de republic, they're a model of governance. All of them share some of the same principles. Why? Because in order to govern people, you need to have, you need to have certain principles in place. One of the things that in, in order to govern people is that you have to protect the rights of the people and you also have to protect the people themselves. Now, if you take a look at North Korea, which is probably the worst place in the world to live, the you know Kim Jong um, has basically forsaken all his people in order for him to have a comfortable lifestyle. He eats Italian cuisine. He dines on you know uh, I, I've heard from different people he dines on foie gras, um, drinks you know Dom Perignon, and you know, he looks, you know, while well, he was fat for a while, he lost some weight, but he looks, you know, healthy and the rest of the country is starving. Well, one of the reasons he doesn't want any reforms is because in reforms, he's going to lose power. I mean, that that's what usually happens in the, in the, in the reform. It, you know, anytime you have a government reform, the elites lose power. And so the elite, his group would rather, you know, take advantage of the people rather than have um, um, his pe he would rather punish his people, have them suffer, have millions die from famine while he lives lavishly than have a reform, which is the same thing as the uh, prime minister of the Equatorial Guinea, where he is um, one of the, the, the most corrupt governments in the world is um, is Equatorial Guinea because it has oil. And the president, uh, Theodoro Oban Nguemo Basago, is one of the most uh, corrupt people in the planet. He does the same thing. And, and so they would rather have reform. So going back to why is this important? Well, one of the things that why, why we diluted the... Um, why we diluted terms for government is because we want to polarize each other. So fascism is a right-wing ideology. It's the second worst. It's the second worst form of government on the right. There is the worst, absolute most right-wing horrible dictatorship government is a monarchy. That by far is the worst. The, I will say this is, and it's a it's a strong debate. The only ones that I would put more worse than a monarchy, the 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 only form of government that is probably worse than being a, than having a king or a queen, is communism. That's probably the only government that is worse than um, than there is. It's it's one of the worst types of government there there is. The monarchies are horrible as governors, as you know. Um, you take a look at what's happening, what happened under England, you know, um, you know, prior, you know, prior to the Magna Carta, uh, prior to a lot of the the things, is that you know the kingdoms were horrible places to live, and as we've evolved, we've realized, yeah, there there's some governments that don't work. So one of the things that the right wing has done, and especially in, in the last 20 years, and I and because again, we didn't have these debates about what what types of governments worked when when I was in school. And, it, and one thing that we didn't argue about was that um, we didn't argue about 
that fascism was a left-wing ideology. It's not. Fascism is the complete opposite of communism. They're, they're enemies. So when when Hitler took over, when, when Hitler took over, he th their their biggest enemies was um was the communists and they, and they went to war over it. But why do we do that? The reason is why we you know why we changed the why we changed the meaning was to po polarize each other. So now everything is on the left. Oh my god, you're a fascist, you're on the left, you're a socialist, you're on the left, you're a communist, everything is on the left. All right, fuckheads, what's on the right? What what do you think? What 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 exactly is right wing ideology? They can't tell you why. Because they've diluted it. What's the Republican message? I'm a lifelong Republican. I am a Reagan Republican. But let me point something out to you. Trump and Obama were both Democrats at the same time when Obama was president. Look that up. Both Nixon and Hillary were Republicans at the same time. JFK and Ronald Reagan were both Democrats at the same time. So when you take a look at, at, at ideology, things change. And the reason we polarized each other is because what we don't want to say, what we instead of saying, hey, this is wrong when the Republicans or the Democrats are doing it, well, we want to say, no. It's only bad when the when our um, when the opposition is doing it. Well, guess what? The the more we do that, the more that they can get away with doing stupid shit while they're in governor while they're in governance. The purpose of a government again is you you as a human being have some rights. You, you do. You have a right to you know the, like the Bill of Rights, but you have a right to exist. A government should be in a government is in place to protect the rights of the uh, of, of its citizens, to make sure that you're not being unlawfully detained, that you're not that you're able to have your castle, that you're able to ha to be married to the to the person you want to be married to, to to have a right that if you're working that you don't get robbed, um, and the um. And I'm going to say something, JJ, I'm going to say something to you. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. Reagan was a liberal in the in a sense of the word. The liberal and again, this is what has um happened in hijacking those words. That you got to remember this, that Reagan if you take a look at the at, at his policies, they're rather, you know, they're liberal. But what happened today? Well, they've, you know, the liberal the, the the policies of the left have been taken over by the extremes. And the same thing with the right. It, you know, if Thomas Jefferson was probably our most, of all the presidents we've ever had, I'm going to put him at the top of the list as far as a, who is our best president. Um, and it was probably Thomas Jefferson, who, because he's done more for America today to shape America than any other president has. Our are probably our worst president, but he, our worst president that has done. I, I'm I, I got to think about who's our worst president, but Thomas Jefferson was a really good president, and he was for protecting the rights of the individual. Now, wasn't very good about slavery. He, he was conflicted about that, and, and that's fine. But we want to look at at a two hundred year old thinking with today's logic. Well. I'm going to say I'm going to sit there and say something to y'all. If you had the ability today to own slaves, you would. Think about this: India today has more slaves and more. They have more slaves under the age of 16 than the North American slave trade did its whole existence today. So if you're saying, "Well, you know, slavery was bad," of course it was. No one's defending slavery, but if you had a chance to have, um, um, you're probably right about that. And, and, and Dean, this is why ideology has changed. We've gone from, um, we've gone from having really decent, 
um, you know, we've had from having really decent politicians to self-serving, you know, pigs. When, and, and I'm going to say this. No one, and let's let's take a look at JFK, who had the absolute best economy of any president in modern history. Um, GDP growth um, and everything. He lowered taxes, did everything. He, was, he had the best GDP growth of any, any. No one that was in office at the time would have said Kennedy didn't have the best interest of the country in mind when he passed some of the bills. Now, Looking back at it, some of the bills might have, you know, but if you take a look at, at, at what Kennedy did, you know, increase the space, NASA, put it, you know, help put a man in the moon. And what he did was, uh, yeah, it, it's, I, it, it is, it, Michelle, it's like picking, I'm tired of picking up the lesser of two evils. I don't want evil on the ballot. I, I don't. But here's why we we changed the the narrative. Why we changed the uh, um, why we changed the, you know the narrative. Why we did all of this is because now they could use terms that were normal and acceptable to polarize us. Because you know everybody thinks that the the liberals are on the left, and they're they're not. I, I mean it, it's. You know, Thomas Jefferson was considered a liberal of the time. And what did he want? He expanded the United States. He made sure domestically we were, we had a, a you know, the Marine Corps was de deployed for the first time in combat. Uh, we made, we did land acquisition. He, he made sure that the treasury, our tr national treasury was on, was at least um, kept up. You know, he did the Louisiana Purchase, and he was a good president. He was considered a liberal of the time. And the the point that I'm making about this is that the terms change, and they're not for the better. And so the powers that be want us to um, want us to be argued at each other. But it's I, I think that the, the one of the problems that happens. Uh, is that we have now um, we we have changed? Hold on a second. Why do you think that is? He wasn't. A, um, I don't know. I don't. I mean, Dean, explain that to me. Why do you think that was with with Jefferson? Or um, who, who are you talking about in, in particular? Be a little bit more specific but if you take a look at at jefferson he fixed the problem jfk was a combat vet and i'm going to say something i, I want to go back to something in in order eisenhower kennedy johnson nixon carter reagan bush all of them were combat veterans or i shouldn't say that i'm not i, I apologize all of them were world war ii veterans so from eisenhower to George Bush, 41, all of our presidents were World War II veterans. Bill Clinton was the first non-veteran in a long time that to, it was stood in the White House. And I think one of the problems that we have is that we that I think that veterans, not to say that I don't want our commander-in-chief to be a veteran, but I think we did better when we had veterans in the White House. Uh, we haven't had a veteran in the White House since uh, George Bush uh, in 2000, two th from 2000 to 2008. We haven't had it in, in 14 years. We haven't had a veteran in the White House. And I think that has affected part of the, our policy. And, I, and I t uh, yeah, I think Kennedy was, uh, I don't know that he would have been a career politician, but I think Kennedy saw that there were some issues that needed to be fixed. And I read his book, PT 109. And um, he, if you read his, uh, um, if you read his medals, right? Um, uh, if you read what he, you know, what he did, Kennedy was a legitimate combat 
you know, a, you know, it was a legitimate combat. Uh, um, oh, I, I, whatever you want to call him, he was a, a legitimate combat uh, veteran. He had the, uh, you know, he had a Purple Heart, uh, Navy and Marine Corps medal, you know, American Campaign, Asian Pacific War II Victory Medal. He was a legitimate, um, a legitimate veteran. I mean, a legitimate combat vet, and I think that made his view on going to war in Vietnam a little bit better. I I don't know. We've had something like that up until George Bush in 1990 um, with Desert Storm. I, Reagan was a. I think Reagan was probably the 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 second most. Um, I'm going to put JFK, Ray, um, JFK, Bush, Reagan, as far as presidents trying to avoid war. Um, and Reagan did, you know, I know that, you know, he, he did a lot of posturing, but what he did was he, he went and went after the cold war. And some of the things that he did was to avoid real conflict because had he not done anything about Libya and Libya could have escalated into a bigger threat than it than it, it should have. Um, I think the thing with Beirut, I think he learned from it. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of weird, but I served in the Marine Corps from eighty four to eighty eight, and I wish I could find the the letter that they wrote to us in um, eighty six when we just deployed, and it was one of the best letters ever. I never felt when I was in the Marine Corps that our, our government didn't have our best interest in mind. Going back to that, we what we did as a whole is up until the last few cycles, we worked as a whole together. Uh, and we worked as a, as a whole, we worked together. And, I, and, I, and what I mean by that is that, you know, even even Tip, Tip O'Neill, when he was, uh, you know, Speaker of the House under, with Reagan, they worked together. We haven't had that in since Clinton took office. You know, Clinton and, uh, you know, Clinton and uh, once Clinton took office, we saw that identity politics took over. And, and in doing identity uh, in, in doing identity politics, we were able to finance politics. So now if you're outraged by something, you can find a, a, a group or a political affiliation that you could give money to that now says, oh, okay, well, you're, you're fine. You're upset that, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever, that uh, my little pony doesn't have a seat in Congress. Okay, well, there's a group for you. Give us money. And, uh, you know, and Bill Clinton and you, Greg Gingrich, never did that. They never got together in the, in the same way that they did. And the point of it is, is that I think as we go further and further down the road, we're not, we're, we're using terms to polarize each other that we should be using. You know, and the left versus right ideology is was originally created for 200 years, you know, for 200 plus years, left versus right comes from the, the French National Assembly of the, of the 1790s. We had the right wing and the left wing. Some people that don't know that have never studied history say it's from the, you know, the Bible. Nope. It's from the French National Assembly. Everybody that, everybody that studied politics knows that. But what we did is that, you know, they... They say, oh, the you know, well, the left wing is the fascism, socialism, and, and, and it's not. And so what we've done is to we've done that to polarize each other because we think all the bad things are on the left. Now, does the left owe us an apology? You you sure they do. Communism as a form of government has probably killed off more citizens in the 20th century than any other form of government. I, I mean, I've studied this, and it, it is, you know, you talk a look at, at uh, China, Russia, North Korea, uh, Cambodia, 
um, the Eastern Bloc countries, uh, you know, and every one of them that it's incorporated communism has had a high death toll. And it's just the way it is because in order, communism, the first thing that they do is they get rid of the intellectuals. And that's what they need to do in order for communism to work. You have to kill the intellectuals. It, and it's just sad because that's the way they do it. I mean, it's just, it's, so now what you've done is you, you know, what, you know, what communism does is it, it, it works in a way that people that think they're going to be elites aren't. And that's the sad part about it is that, well, I thought I was going to be, you know, people, uh, um, you know, it, it's like there's a joke running around. Well, wait a second. I thought I was going to be in, in, in teaching interpretive dance to my lesbian class at, uh, you know, at three o'clock. I didn't want to work at the gulag. Well, you're going to. Sorry. That's the way it works. Um, and as a result of it, they... Uh, they are going to now um, look at things differently. And I, I think a lot of it is that, you know, the other thing is that people get in, elected into D.C. and instead of helping the people, they help themselves. And that is one of the other problems. I mean, it's just, it, it's just crazy. And I don't, know, I don't know what has led to this. Uh, what's up, Earl? Uh, by the way, I don't know if you saw the score yesterday. Ohio State 52, uh, Wisconsin 21. Just to let you know, the Ohio State University. Uh, for those who don't know, VTT is uh, Big Earl is uh, runs veteran trash talk. Uh, doesn't have a single leg. Uh, underhook is rather suspect. So just uh, wanted to let you guys know. Uh, anyway, where was going with this? So we we've diluted words to make things work. I, and I'll give you a prime example in sports, right? And, and why there's a, a commercial that's going around. It, it's, uh, hey, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, OSU against the spread is not a bad bet. Uh, Ohio State against the spread is not a bad bet. Um, the worst against the spread team in college is Notre Dame. Ohio State is not bad. Um they're not good, but they're not bad either. So um, that's a fine bet. But here's the thing. I, I'll give you a prime example, right? One of the things that we've diluted is sports. There's a commercial going on in 1977, NFL Today. Every defensive play is uh, – every defensive play in that commercial would be either a fine or a penalty – or an ejection today. And that is what's crazy about it. So um, you have, uh, you've got a lot of people out there that, you know, just basically um, have nothing that uh, it is, uh, that is, you know, that you have people out there diluting things and it say, well, you know, they would be better than this. And, it, and, and they bring it up into the debate. Well, you, you got to remember different eras mean different things. But what, what we've done today and in, in why words matter is because we've ostracized and polarized the the political debate in order to turn the opposition to enemies. We're, we're, we should we should be. We're all Americans. Seriously. I don't want to I, I don't want to punish my fellow American citizens. I, I really don't. If they have a different ideology, I don't. At the end of the day, I, I don't mind paying my taxes. I don't mind having, you know, I, I don't mind feeding, you know, where if somebody's a little bit less fortunate than myself, I don't mind giving them, you know, welfare. I don't mind having food stamps out there. I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't want the abuse, but at the same time, in a plural society, I understand we need to help. It's the same thing with our veterans. I, I don't mind, uh, uh, Yeah. You know what? I, I got to tell you this. There is a, uh, there is, uh, the Democrats introduced that, right? Uh, in the, in the early 19, you know, so to give you an example, why 
Earl's right about that is that the Democrats introduced that they wanted to have the uh, used to be the state assemblies would, uh, you know, put a senator in D.C. to represent the state. Now you have a um, you have a uh, you uh, yeah, and, and it was, and it, it was pork in the, in the women's suffrage bill. But, and a lot of people thought, and a lot of the Democrats that introduced it thought that they were going to have a run on being select, you know, selectivism or whatever you want to call it in the, uh, that they were going to be able to control, the Democrats were going to have more power. And it backfired on them. And it backfired when they expanded the Supreme Court. Um, it, 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 people, there, there's a, the law of unintended circumstances that sometimes has to play out in real life before they realize that, Hey, maybe we, we, uh, Dean, you say that, but here's the thing. Do you, if you don't have a problem helping out a fellow vet, then you shouldn't have a, a problem helping out somebody that is, you know, that least that has fallen on hard times because people do that. You have a road because somebody paid their taxes on it. You have a school because somebody paid taxes. You have water because somebody paid taxes. Now, listen, I'm to the right of Genghis Khan on some things, but if uh, then, but I I don't mind paying for a school. I don't mind paying property tax. You know why? Because I don't want stupid people graduating. I, I and I, and, I, and I, we've got to get away from this that it's you know it, it's it, it's not my job kind of thing. Uh, I want to have a good police department. I want to have a good fire department. Um, I don't want to have the fu- the bucket brigade, and I don't want to have a horse drawn carriage. You know, I, I want to have good fire, good schools, good roads. Uh, I, I just don't want it to be so extreme to be on the opposite side of that. So the the problem that I have, uh, and the the problem that I have with a lot of this. Is that at the that we? It, it's only when things. Uh, it's only when things go to the extreme that they become horrible. Like you take a look at AOC. AOC is a prime example of the extreme. Mitch McConnell, prime example of the extreme. Um, Nancy Pelosi at the extremes. Most people are centrist because whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you get into Congress or you get into the, to, to run the government. You got to collect taxes to make the government run. I mean, you can't run the government without taxes. You can't. Um, you can't get into you know be in power and not have a strong military. We've become the police uh, the the police presence of the world. That is a that is what we have done. Um, the issue has been is do we? It's only when it becomes extreme. And now what we've done is we've we've made uh, 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 115 times what's a um, 115 times 150. What are you talking, Dean? What are you talking about over there? Um, uh, and which one are you, uh, talking about? Uh, uh, what is a whole different show? But again, it goes back to you know, when Trump took office, he did the exam, he did a democratic policy, which is he cut that they. He cut taxes, but raised the debt ceiling. That's not fiscal responsibility. Uh, all right, I'm going to blow that one out of the narrative. Okay, if if we had the same equivalent in 19 prior to the income tax, look this up because it's a population thing. If the Marine Corps was at the same strength prior to the income tax, you know how many standing members. Um, do you know how many standing members the Marine Corps would have today? 30,000 members. That's it. If the Marine Corps was at the same strength prior to the income tax, prior to the creation of the Federal Reserve, we would have only 30,000 Marines today. Look it up. It, it's, a, it's a percentage. It, it's So we have had to expand things in the government because we have grown as a country and we need certain things that only taxes at a national level can give us. And I want you to think about something there, Big Earl, because again, sports fan, uh, um, 
Yeah, but here's the thing, Dean. You don't have a rating uh, a rating party. Uh, no, but we need to have we we become the police force of of the world. And even still, even if you if we shrink down our president, the reason here here's the thing, big girl. I, I want to want you to think about this. Coca Cola is sold in every country except North Korea and Cuba. Why? Because we've had an American presence, and Coca Cola's policy was anywhere there's an American serviceman, we will deliver Coca Cola to them. Think about that before you you know. I it, it's not for a bigger military. It's because we do commerce, and commerce uh, restricts wars. And Russia and the Ukraine is the first country to go to war, or only the second country ever to go to war that both of them had McDonald's. But I digress. Is words actually mean something? And the problem is today is, uh, well, it's, you know, it, it, it's not people in the middle. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, to, I'm very right wing on some issues. I think that if you go to war, you got to have a punitive expedition. We haven't had one in years. The last punitive expedition America carried out was linebacker one and two. We haven't had one since then. If you're going to go to war, go to war, break every single thing and break the 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 your enemy's will to fight. We haven't done that since linebacker one and two. And go ahead and re retort on that. If you want, come on. Do you, uh, message me if you want to come on. Um, the the issue with it is that it's not is that we have changed the narrative because we want things to we want things to look as something they're they're not and has the left destroyed a lot of things sure they have but so has the right uh well here here's an interesting concept there's a couple senators and that have said that if you want to go to war, you should have it put it to a national vote. And that was a very interesting uh that was a very interesting argument. Uh and it, it is a it, it's a very interesting argument that if you go to war, should you put it to a national vote? So you know, the interest of the country is what and with that in mind, I don't know that we would have went to war in Iraq. Uh, we would have gone to war in Afghanistan, but I don't think we would have gone to war in Iraq. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but again, it goes back to we've changed the words. Uh, uh, you know, hey, as a little spoon, I hope you enjoy your time in the hot tub there, uh, big girl. Um, and uh, But we've changed words to mean different things. And as a result of it, we actually don't know what words mean anymore. Um, and it is, uh, and, and, part, and, and again, part of the problem has been is we've gone off and we've traded, like I said, we, we've used, I, and I'll give you one thing that scares the ever living, what scares me the most, not, not the most, but it does scare me. Two things in the financial industry that have been wrecked because of the way we use words, okay? And we change them on purpose to take advantage of consumers. And it's a, and, it, and, it, and, it, and again, it bothers me. One of them is yield spread premiums. It used to be that you had to disclose those on lending, right? On, on, uh, on mortgages. Now you don't in some places. You don't. And a yield spread premium is how much the lender is making or the originating agent is making by doing the loan. And in some places, they don't have to, it, it, they don't have to say that. Number two is the fiduciary rule for a 401k. Now, I used to, look, I used to be, in, uh, I had a series 663 and 7. I used to trade stocks. I got out of it. Uh, I, um, I got out of it. Because they, uh, I, I, I got out of it because they, a lot of the rules changed and you couldn't make money on it anymore. And so as a result of it, they, they changed the rules completely. You could not, you know, so now if you're a consumer buying a financial vehicle, you don't know if it's, 
whose best interest is if you don't ask those up front. Hey, um, let's do a show again. Again, um, your single leg is suspect, uh, but we'll talk later. But again, we've changed those terms and look at where it's gotten us. The point of it is, is that if we don't fix these things, if we don't, we're going to get more and more polarized and we're going to hurt people as a result of it. So I, how do we fix it? I don't know. Uh, stop people from using stupidity. Uh, if they, um, if they come out with something, call them out on it. Now the, the free speech, you know, people are saying, oh, free speech is, uh, you know, it, it, you know, free, yeah. Free speech allows you to say what you want to say. It doesn't mean you're, you're free from ridicule. And it, it doesn't mean that you're, that you're free, uh, you know, from being ridiculed if you come up with a, something stupid. If you come up with something stupid, you need to be made fun of. And that's something we've, we've, we've kind of stopped. It's like, oh, I'm offended. Oh, I'm, a, you know, that's so offensive. Well, okay, that and, uh, you know, $2 will buy you, uh, you know, will buy you a, uh, uh, what you call it, will buy you a uh, cup of coffee. I mean, seriously, you're offended. So what? And and that is the um, that is the one thing that has really been uh, that has really taken over in our in our marketplace is that we think being offended is currency, and it's not. Um, it is not currency. It is if you're offended, it doesn't give you any other special currency. Like, oh, that's offensive. What what it has done? It is uh, it has destroyed a lot of those uh, conversations about what has you know what we need to have because you know part of it is and you know we you know we can have this conversation. I, I don't want to have it tonight on the show, but if we had had if we would have had sex education earlier and i'm not talking about the the you know the grooming part of it but if we would have had sex education before or 30 years ago or 40 years ago we would the catholic church and their priests been able to get away with some of the you know repugnant actions they did and i don't think so but again we uh uh yeah i mean you can say we what you know you can uh um but again, it, it's the you know the problem is would we have been able to, um, uh, been able to have better conversations had we you know would would the the priests been able to get away with some of the stuff had we had sex education and again, I'm not I I don't want you know the the LGBT community to you know the some of the stuff they're teaching but saying hey, age appropriate knowledge would have helped if we'd have said hey listen, you know. You, you, as a kid, you don't get that, you know, they, there's no such thing as keeping a secret from mommy and daddy. If somebody's touching you inappropriately, come out with it. Would that have helped? I don't know. And again, we learn more from a lot of the mistakes that we've done, but also, uh, uh, we also don't learn and that's a problem too. And as a result of it, we do, uh, uh, you know, we do, we get into certain debates because we, we don't have a better answer. I don't know. It, it, it's, and it's very hard because we, I like I said, if they keep us polarized from each other, then they can pull off all sorts of shit. And that, and that is what's scary because that's what they're doing. They're polarizing us against each other so they could have, uh, uh, so they, they could have, um, you know, when they're divided, they can get, get away with more shit. And it's that, you know, that's, that is one of the, the things that's going on in government is the more stuff that is going on, the more craziness, it's the more stuff that they're getting away with. Anyway, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, hopefully you guys learned some stuff and, um,
Thank you for supporting VRS. We're trying the best we can to bring you some of the best content on the internet. Thank you for supporting us. We will see you here next time. And uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to us. The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment.